Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. In this video, in my continuation of the development of the SWL 120's light management computer, I'm going to be adding the input system. So, let's get started. There are two main components to this input system, the front end and the back end, at least that's what I consider it to be. The front end, as I like to call it, is the coding of the label, which handles the displaying of the imported characters. And the back end system, which is where most of the actual coding will happen, is how numbers are created when you're on certain pages and you click certain buttons. I can't think of an easy way to explain it as I'm making it, so I'm going to make part of the input system on a page which just has a few simple inputs, and then I'll explain, at least as best as I can, how I've done that. Three weeks later, and that has been done. You, you can enter in things such as the runway, and this has to be a valid runway code, so you can't just type in any random string and input it. It has to be a valid code, like 36 left, or just 36. And then you can just toggle dry or wet for the runway conditions. Runway heading is has to be a number of three digits or less. So say for the 36 that'll be 360. And the runway length again can be any number of four digits or less. That's this page. And I also kinda went ahead and finished the entire flight manager computer. So everything is finished. And that's what I've been doing for the last two weeks working on this. Another thing you might notice, not related to simple planes, is my footage is finally 1920 by 1080 instead of 1920 by 1200. That's because I got three new 144 Hz gaming monitors over Christmas. The only thing that's really means for my videos is there's no longer that annoying black border on both sides of the screen. 144 Hz is nice. You don't really notice it, but I definitely notice it's a lot smoother for me. So I think I will just show you all of the functions in the computer, then I'll show you how I did, or at least I'll try, I'll try to explain how I did it. I'm not sure I'll be able to fully explain how I did every single thing, because it took me two weeks to be make it, and it'll take me way longer than 20 minutes to explain it. So I think I'll start where, with where you'd start when you set it up for a flight. And that starts at the setup page. So I have support for four mod airports, or really three mod airports, then the platform is... It's in the code, it's a mod, but it's just the platform you're playing on for user interface. So you have the three mod airports, KPM, AWAR, and Zinshan. And the platform can be computer or mobile. These are all for waypoints. So if I have the KPU waypoints enabled, that means all of the waypoints related to the KPU Town Airport are available for use, otherwise they are hidden. Same for Zinshan and Maywar. Now, Mabel has an airport, or at least the airport's a separate mod, and there's also Mabel Island, so the Mabel mod airport enables the waypoint specific to the airport. Whereas the Mabel, since Mabel is only available on computer, those waypoints are enabled when the platform is at the computer. So, what this affects, for at least for the core FMC, is just what's showing up on the waypoints page. So you have your three mod airports, and the computer waypoints are technically default, like in-game, so I just added them as two extra pages here and here on the default waypoint pages. And it's the same idea for the other the other mod airport waypoints. You just have a page of different waypoints in latitude and longitude. I also made it so you can add up to four custom waypoints. So you go in here and you have add new, and then you can type in any letters or numbers. It has to be six digits or characters, not digits, that's just for numbers. And that's just to make it uniform, so waypoints have to be six digits, six characters, not digits. So you're going to type any string, anything you can type in using the keypad will work. You can put that in. Then the latitude has to be any number, which is between one and six digits. Well, six digits is the maximum you can enter in this import system, so really has to be a number of one or more characters or digits. Take any number, same for the longitude, and you can add another waypoint. 
and you can repeat. Oh, that's a bug. I thought I debugged this, but I guess not. But that's never happened before, because I know I was testing this, but this is a new bug. I'll have to look into that. Because there should be a multi selector that's for a. I know what caused that. I can add another one. Wait, I have to enter in latitude and longitude. And then I have one more page where I can enter in waypoints. I can add a fourth one, and then that's the maximum. You can enter four, up to four waypoints. You can also delete them. And deleting them actually deletes the contents instead of just hiding it. So if I added it again, you can see it's all gone. So that is the setup page and the waypoints. Then you have your takeoff page. I've gone over this. The takeoff page, in terms of actual function, is completely useless for simul planes. But in real life, it would. Actually, I, I, th I think I'll do something with calculating speeds and things in real life. But in here, you can just enter in information. The landing page is identical, but it has different variables to store information. So I can again repeat. I've done on the takeoff page, I'm just going to put in random information. So these two are basically identical, they just have different variables, so you can have two sets of information. Then we have the aircraft information page. This contains just information about a plane. Now in real life, this would have other information, but I just added a mix of stuff that'll be in there in real life, and also a mix of some more planes related information. So the nav data. I think that will be there in real life. This in simul planes just means what version of waypoints and the navigation information does the specific XML file have. Because this is still in development, it's going to stay at, well, at version 1.0 for a while. But if I were to say make an update to the plane, then this would be 1.1 or so on. Same for the simul planes version. So if I were to update the XML file after the aircraft was posted on the website, then this would change to, to 1.1 and so on. The author and second author are pretty self explanatory. I'm playing Flight X and that's why I created this plane. Now, the second author, that is a friend of mine called KLab747 on simpleplanes.com, and he helped me with a lot of rocky trees and ideas for this plane, so I put him in there as a second author. We also have three different options, Auto Start, Reset System, RMC, and Reset System, FMC. Auto Start, when I actually code it in, will fully start the plane with engines running, ready for takeoff, so you don't have to click any buttons. Now the Reset System buttons, currently they don't do anything, they, they just take you to a page then you can confirm or cancel it, but when they're fully coded, and I might do this in next week's video, it will reset the computer, like all the different variables and inputs as if you'd restarted the level. So you can just cancel out of it or you can confirm it. Confirm it just puts you to the home page, doesn't actually reset anything. But it will reset something eventually. So if I were to say click FMC and click confirm, what that would do is reset all these values and every other value to just be empty. And after the aircraft information page we have the initializer in it page. This is again more information which has no purpose in simple planes but would have a purpose in real life. Takeoff weight in pounds, fuel weight in pounds, and the passenger number. Pack to short for passenger. These just can be any number which is greater than one and is a number. Although, if you had a single pound of fuel, that will be not enough to even run the APU for more than a few seconds. Uh, the plane also can't carry 999 passengers, but I guess you can do that. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and code every single limitation in because that'll take too long. I've already explained the waypoints page and then ICOs. This is basically think SMS text messages but for planes essentially. Now this just permanently displays no messages because I can't be bothered to make this function because it's kinda hard because it have to code a whole artificial intelligence system to send messages manually or something. So it just displays no messages and that's all you can do in here. And now we have the flight plan page. This is very complicated because this is where Almost 80%, actually it probably is over 80% of all of the variables are for. You have your origin and destination. 
your flight number, then you have three sub pages for climb, cruise, and approach, three stages of flight, and then your flight plans page. So the origin and destination, a way to input a four character IQ, IQ, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's spelt I C A O, and is a code used to identify airports. I've made a list of codes. And also, if you have certain mod airports enabled or disabled, those codes will function or not function. So these are all the different IKEO codes I still uh, pronounce that. I'll just try and pronounce it as best I can. Now, an IKEO code has the first letter or two letters indicates the country of the airport, and then the other three airports just uh, then the other three letters indicate the airport. So the IKEO code for right is. Z right or like Z W G T for the origin. You can technically put in the same IKEO code for the destination. I couldn't actually wouldn't take too long, much code to make it, so you c can't be the same. But I'm just gonna leave it like that. They have the origin destination. I'm just gonna put it in some other airport. I shall do Zinshan. Then the flight number. This can be any two letters, and then one or more numbers, which is what any flight code is. So, for example, for Qantas, that'll be QF, not QA, QF, QF, and then any okay, random string of numbers, I can put that in. Then the climb page has more information, and this will be, all of this will be useful for the autopilot when I eventually code that. So it, it will read the climb vertical speed, the climb speed, and the target altitude from this, and automatically put that into the autopilot. All of these have to be numbers of any length aside from this. So when I put boxes, that means you have to have three or four, however many boxes there are, characters. So for climb speed, you have to have three characters. It has to be numbers as well, otherwise it won't input it. For dashes, the number of dashes is the maximum number of characters you can input. For example, for target altitude, it doesn't have to be 5, but it can't be more than 5, so it can't be 6. So I can put it in, say, 5000, and that will be inputted. I'm going to leave cruise until later. I'm just going to focus on approach right now. Actually, no, I'm going to do flight plans now. So, I've made it so you can have up to 5 different flight plans that you can name, and each of those flight plans can have up to 25 waypoints in a list. So I'm going to type in, I don't know, some random string for the first flight plan. And then once you've inputted a name, a waypoints page will appear. And then you can click that page. Then you'll be taken to another page. So you can click add waypoint. Then it will have another waypoint. This has to be a valid waypoint. And one waypoint that I can think of right now without consulting my list is right air, which is right airport. And then you can add other one. And these all can be the same waypoint because I couldn't be bothered to like code that checks if it's the same waypoint. I'm just gonna put it in something else. Zinshare. And that 4A multi selector code is broken. And I I'll explain what how that works very soon, because I'm just showing you how the FMC is used. And then I'll actually fix that. So they can just pretend there is a waypoint, so I'm gonna type in something else. If I can't, that's another one. Put that there, and then I can add another waypoint, and so on. And then you can actually have up to 24 waypoints, like I've just said, over five pages. So then in the cruise page, we have a cruise flight level, a cruise mode, and a cruise speed, or the cruise flight plan. So the cruise flight level, a flight level is, I think what makes the most sense is a cruise flight level is basically an altitude, but the last two digits taken off. So a cruise flight level of, say, 25, so 250 would be 25,000. Cruise speed is basically the speed you're cruising at. And again, like the uh, climb speed, it has to be three digits because, well, any more and you'd be going hypersonic, any less and you would be stalling. So it can only be three digits. I'll just put in 300. So the cruise mode can either be IFR, VFR, or manual, or man. That just stands for manual. IFR means instrument flight rules. VFR means visual flight rules, and I guess manual is technically visual flight rules, so I just put it in there so it disables all the other things. So if you just want to fly the plane 
just fly it without interacting with any of the controls. They can just change it to manual, and then you can just do that. So the cruise flight plan only appears when IFR is selected, because otherwise you wouldn't need a flight plan. And that cruise flight plan can be any one of our five flight plans that we've made on the flight plans page. And pretty much this code checks what that the input in this input is the same as the variables for that flight plan. So hello is a valid flight plan, because that's the name of that flight plan, and then it will input that into the system. And i just like to point out here, none of the code that actually does anything with these inputs is written. I only have the code that just stores inputs. So the approach page is very similar to the other two pages. You have the approach mode, approach route, vertical speed, and target altitude again, as well as the waypoint mode. So the approach mode, I'm not quite sure what this is going to do. But I think ILS will make it so so the ILS is enabled, so if you have a frequency tuned in on the RMC and you're in the range of the ILS beacon, then it will allow you to do that, otherwise it'll just not work the ILS system. Uh, VOR, that's turning to something, but basically it's pretty much ILS, but you don't need any external equipment, you just use GPS waypoints to land the plane by itself. And I put that in there because I'm going to code that as well. I think I'm just going to re reuse the ILS code because the ILS code in Simul Planes is that because there's no ILS beacons in Simul Planes. So any ILS code is just simulating where the ILS beacons would be. The manual, or man, it's the same idea, just disables everything so you're flying the plane yourself. Approach V speed is vertical speed. It can be anything. I guess it could be 999, although that is way too fast. Tug altitude is pretty straightforward, and tug altitude. And the waypoint mode, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to code this, but it's either none or VNAV or vertical navigation. And what VNAV is, is it tr basically tries to make the airplane climb at a rate such that it will be at the target altitude right as you're crossing over a waypoint. This is a very simplified version with one waypoint versus a bunch. But I'm going to try and make this work when I eventually get to coding this. And this again can be any valid waypoint. And also I'm just going to get out over all of this. In our waypoint page with our custom waypoints, I'm just going to delete all of these. So I'll say we name a waypoint, I don't know, 888 so I just remember it. If I go into my, where is it, flight plan, approach, I can enter an 8H8, and then, huh, why is it that when I go to demonstrate things, everything just doesn't work? Because what should happen is when you click on this, it will allow you to input it. Oh, never mind, I know why this isn't working. I need to put in the latitude and longitude. Alright, there we go. Now this should work. There we go. It's not broken, after all. So any target, wait, any valid waypoint, including custom ones, will work here. And that's actually it for... Well, actually, the input system of the FMC. Now I'm going to try my best to explain exactly how I've made this. I'm not sure entirely where I actually started to work on the FMC. But I think this document is where I should start explaining it. So the FMC has three core components. Two back-end components and one front-end component. The two back-end components are the core variables and the current page code. And the front-end is the label. The variables are, aside from the current page code, all of the variables in here which have FMC at the beginning of the name. The, the absolute core, like, just for the FMC variable storage, variables. And then there are the variables for the FMC R, which is the right computer. And there will eventually be variables for FMC L, which is the left FMC. I can just copy the right one across, though, so that shouldn't be too hard. And these variables do things like storing the temporary value. And they also handle selection for the multi-selector code. So what I have in this document, and it's a kind of messy, like it's not cleanly set out in a way that's presentable, 
because it was kind of just a bunch of notes that I kept adding to over time. Like, I can understand it, but I'm not sure I can ex understand it enough to explain it, but... Essentially, if you look closely, you can sort of see that I have this, like, logic that I'm inviting out, and then I convert that logic to actual Funky Trees code. So that way I'm not just doing it Funky Trees code, not knowing what it's meant to do. So it's like, this is for the current page, um, which one is it? Right, so this is the current page code. And what I'm trying to say is, when should the page go to zero? And then I answer that, like, sort of question in what I call pseudocode, which is, it's not code, but it's what I logically want the code to do, but written out in understandable English. And then I convert that pseudocode to actual code, so when should the page go to zero, when it's any of these, and this, or it's these options, and then I convert this to a code, so I turn on word wrap, you can see here, I'm like, I have a bunch of clamp ones, and then I have my boolean activator, so if it's 10 or 20 or up to 80, and the option is 10, or the page is 51, and the select option is 40. If this or this is true, then set the page to 0, otherwise just leave it at the current variable for current page. And so on for all of these other ones, I just have a bunch of uh, parameters, I guess. And then sometimes I have multiple param like sets of parameters. So if all of this is true, or if all of this is true, then do this. I just had that a bunch. And then I have all of this mess. This is all of the current page code. So it's all of the above code combined into one. That's a lot of closing brackets here. And I could, I could explain what all of this is for days. But essentially, all of these documents contain all of my notes and development for the FMC. I think I'm going to try and explain how it works now. Well, I've sort of been doing that, but anyway. This is similar to the other document. More stuff where I'm just writing pseudocode and then converting that into normal code. And then it's all here so I know what I was trying to do. Now, the way the multi-selectors work is I have all my different variables which have their own parameters for being set. Actually, what document's that one? That would be this one. So essentially, all of these different lines are when a certain variable should be set. So, say here for the takeoff page, we have the runway. So when do we want to put the variable from this temp value into the runway? Well, we want to do that. And where is that actually? Um, a takeoff runway here. We want to do that, I, I didn't write pseudo code here, I just wrote it in code because I think I understood it enough to know what I was doing. So we want to set the takeoff runway when the page is 30, when the select option is 30 as well, and the temporary value number, so how many characters are in the temporary value, is less than 4, so that's 3 or less, and the number is greater than 1, so we don't just input a single number because 1 is not a valid runway code, we would write that as 01, not just 1. And, and then I just have more clamper 1s. This clamper 1 code, like all of this, this checks if that third value is a letter, and that letter has to be either L, C, or R for left, center, and right. And then if all this code is true, then we set the takeoff runway. I think uh, one that's simpler would be just the flight plan one. It just needs to be any string, period. So this page has an identifier of 14. Here it is, so when the variable for custom flight plan 1 is set, it just needs to be 14, and then the select option needs to be 30, and then the temporary value number has to be greater than 0, so it just input nothing. And then if, if, if those three variables are true, then basically equal 1, setting the variable. So all of these different lines were then put into variables, and I'll explain the variables now. So all of the variables, like the core storage of different inputs, have an identifier as an FMC, and then the page number, and then the line number, and then some other one string, and then the code. I just have them all being FMC because it just makes it so I can see FMC and all of the one on the quick list will increase them. And then the page number, just the page number, and then I have the line number, which is 
not like like the line number because this is line two, this is line three. It's more like the button number. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, but it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on for the line number. And then I have something after that, like um, that word wrap. You can see here, I don't know any all any of these. A lot of them just have very no then one and two, because most of these just store strings. But for other ones, for example, uh, was one uh, the cruise mode. The cruise page number is 12, and this is button. I'll just find 12. So 12, I think yeah, so five. Stay in loop. The loop just adds one whenever you press a button, and all the parameters are set. So it's 12, and you select this button here. Then it'll just increase the number, and then to get that number between zero, one, and three, and it's continuously loops like that. I just just have repeat function, and then three. So this state of FMC 12 or 5 is essentially what meld them in for crews. So the way the multi selectors work is, um, I think I'll start back over here again. A lot of these variables for FMC are, are for the multi selectors. So first we have line whatever whatever, there no, one and two, and that selects a value for my many variables of storage. For the multi selectors to multi select from. So, say we are on uh, a cruise page. For the line 2A one, which is cruise flight level, we would want to select the current page has to be 12, and I'll just, where is it, 2A, 2A, here it is. The line number has to be 12, it's over here, and actually, no, it just needs to be 12. And if it's 12, then we select. Or 12 or 3 via number to be displayed, or via 1 and 2. Otherwise, we just go on to the next one. Now, since the cruise 2A1 has no second via number, no, no, there are two, so like, since there's no via 2 for this variable group, I just have to display no and 1, and then I just skip it for the 2 one. It's, it's the same for all the other ones. If, it, if you're on this page, then grab this variable, otherwise just go into the next one. And then I have documents for each of the different multi-selectors. For example, for 2A, I have I have three different characters I can display other than actual this multi-selector characters. So if I have some parameters that are true, then display nothing or just like deactivate the multi-selector. If those aren't true, then go to the next set, which is the line parameters. And if any of this is true, then display a line, and then same for the box. You also notice I have pars 1 to 6, and then 1 to 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, and so on. That's because there are six different positions in the multi-selector. So for a single, like, 2A multi-selector, I technically have six multi-selectors, because each character is one character. I just call it one multi-selector as a group, because it's kind of together whenever I put it in. It can never be separated. I just have it as a single group, but I can individually, per character, show lines or boxes or hide it. Now, you can see here, this is the final code, and I don't copy this code and put it in here, simply because that would make the label really long in terms of the number of characters in the label code. So instead, I created some extra variables in here, called act, and then some other numbers. The first number indicates just what type it is, so 1 is the nothing displayed, 2 is line, and then 3 is box, and then after that I have either a single character for what character it's for, or two characters to indicate it's from this character to this character, so act 116 means display nothing for all the position characters, 1, 2, 6. Now, I said I was going to look into that line for a code. Now, I want to figure out exactly what causes this bug to occur. So we're in custom waypoints, and if I add a new, it's definitely 4A, and it's just missing oh, completely. It's just not there. And I think that does happen on flight plan, so if I... Yeah, it's there too. So, it seems to be missing only on flight plan, because what's... Actually, what is another one? Oh yeah, so here. Nope, it's, it's gone entirely. Let's have a look why. That will usually be because this code isn't working. Actually, I can just ch ch check that. So if I debug expression, fmcr line 2a act 11 no 4a act 116. 
you can see here that's one meaning that it's deactivating the code so I'm not sure why that would happen so our current conditions for right now are we're just on the 14th page for flight plans and what we're looking for is something in here that will be true if we're on 14 page or something like that two very boring minutes later okay I have found the reason for this to so see this code here what this code is meant to do is disable the 4A code when FMC 1305, which is the approach page, is set to 1. Actually, no, it's not. It's meant to disable it when this is 0. But the thing is, this is 0 whenever you're not on the 13th page, regardless of the state. So that's why this code only works when you're on this page. Because in here, I have equals 0. So if I just change this to equals 1, and then I take this code and put it in the 4A Act 116, then reload the file. And also this is over here because I had it in the middle of the panel just so I could show it better, but let's just see if it works. And what, so on a page that is not the approach page. So first of all, this part, I'll need to fix that. Works here, but I think it's broken again when you're on that 13th page. Alright, I have some new code. So I'll just copy this code, put it in the variable, reload the file, and it should work. So if we're on, say, the flight plan page, we can enter in anything into that fourth one. Then we can go into the approach page, and there we go. So I fixed that issue. I'll just check some other areas where I was having issues. Waypoints, custom waypoint, add new. Put in some random stuff for the top one. And if I add new, you can see here there's boxes. Alright, so it fixed that bug. And with that, I think there's nothing else I can really explain. I can explain things about this for longer than this video, longer than a lot of videos. But I think I've explained the basics of how I made this. And with that, that is the end of this video. In the next video, which will be the last video of the 6th progress update series, I will be putting the finishing touches on the FMC, and also copying the FMC to the other side. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!